Hello Math 305 Rockstars. I'm going to explain today how to use this applet real quick because uh, it's not obvious and clearly I can't be there uh, in class to show you how. So uh, you're going to go to this website rossmanchance.com slash applets slash one sample 53.html. The link's been provided to you in our exercise. Click on that link and what comes up is this screen right here. Um, it's very interesting. There's lots of options here, but we're going to go with the stars option. And what's interesting is this stars option is exactly the star picture that you have in uh, the handout and in the, the work. So um, notice that there's column and row. Uh, these column and row designators are actually the exact same column and rows that are listed in your star handout. So you can use this app to show you some very interesting information. Uh, one of the things down here is this applet absolutely knows exactly what the distribution is of stars. So for each square, here is the distribution of the stars on that page. Uh, we can see that the mean is 19.6 and the standard deviation is 14.51 um, and then the population size is 100 because there are 100 squares. So definitely click the stars first and now you have the correct data. Then click on show sampling options. So we're going to first do a simple random sample and I'm going to show you um, how to do a simple random sample. You're just going to come down here and click draw samples. Boom. So there's our first sample. Now, is it random? In the uh, work, it mentions pseudo random. Pseudo random is something that is found in Excel and TI calculators, actually, every calculator. Um, it is my understanding that the Rossman Chance applet does indeed have random selection, not pseudo random. And the interesting thing there is is you know the difference between random and pseudo random is is an entire lecture at least a lecture and possibly five or six on their own so we'll just trust that it's random so we've taken one sample of size 10 so i've asked you to do that by hand once uh, what's interesting is here we can do it more than once so down here on the left it shows you what data points were selected. So for example, uh, two separate squares of size, whatever that first column is. Uh, no squares were selected that has uh, 20. Three squares were selected that has looks like 15, etc. Down here, here's a dot plot of the actual um, calculations. It calculated and, and summed it all up for us. Very nice. We have a mean of 18.7 and it graphed it over here for us. So now we can do it again. Great, now it has two. Notice that it has collected the two samples here and graphed our two samples here. Here's the old one, here's the new. Do it again. And again, and again, wow, this is really boring. Okay, let's do 10 samples of a sample size 10. Oh, that's more interesting. We can look down here and see that many, many more data points were added. Again, 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 oh, it's still boring. Okay, now you see why I had you do it once by hand and then we're going to use technology to do it. Ooh, that's interesting. Wow. Doing it a hundred times definitely speeds up the process of taking many, many samples. And notice if you look down here as this continues to grow, what we end up with is a unimodal symmetric graph. Even though our original was absolutely not unimodal symmetric. The mean 
of the most recent sample is 13.4. The mean of all of our samples, our sampling distribution, 19.6. Amazing. 19.6 here, 19.6 here. Standard deviation is 4.3. Standard deviation is 14.5. That's odd. And we'll understand why as we move forward. So this is the applet I'm going to ask you to use to do repeated samples. I'm going to ask you to think carefully and create your own methods. Notice this doesn't tell you what method it used, it just did it. So you have to think about your own method in constructing a simple random sample. Later we will do cluster samples and you have to select the variable. Um, that you're going to cluster by. That will make more sense once we uh, explain cluster samples. And we'll also explain stratify samples. And you'll have to explain what your stratification mechanism is. So simple random sample using this checkbox. Stratifying cluster here. You can adjust the number of samples. You can adjust your sample size. We're going to leave an, 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 an n equals 10 for right now. Um, it'll show you what your actual samples are here. And it'll show you the most recent sample and collect all of your samples. Uh, we're interested in the mean. We're not interested in actually doing um, inferential statistics on it. So we're going to ignore that. We're just interested in the mean. If there are any questions, absolutely, please feel free to contact me. You should contact me um, if this gives you any troubles, and we will move forward. And